Well, hello, and welcome to another episode of Let's Glaze! Attention! This has been sped up. It is on high speed, so it will not go this quickly for you. So remember, start off with a clean container of water and a fresh sponge. Wring out as much of the water as you can. And then using a damp sponge, make sure to wipe down the entire surface of all of your work. Inside as well! If you don't get it all out, there will be residue. Residue makes it so the glaze gets funky and weird and has stuff in it. So make sure you clean your stuff off first. Now you'll notice I put some wax resist on here already. That's where that shiny area is on that square. And there's underglaze in the little dots on the other side. Number one, make sure to look at the bucket recipe so you know you're putting on the right material. The glaze brush and tool clean off bucket should be on the table as well. That's where you're going to clean everything off. So open up your glaze resisting wax, wax, wax resist. Yeah, that's it. That's the ticket. And I'm going to apply it to any place where I don't want the glaze to stick. So in this case, I'm putting wax resist around this little square on either side of my cup. See? So that's where you put the wax, the glaze will resist. And by resist, I mean it will bead up and come off of the piece. So I'm going to put a little wax resist over the glaze that I painted onto those dots that are on the square. Yep, you can do that. You can put wax over glaze or under glaze for that matter. So I'm going to put some wax resist on all these dots that I put onto this bowl, but I'm not going to make you watch that. I am going to make you watch me wax the bottom, because that just makes wiping easier. Yeah, I just said that. So, here's our bucket of glaze. We know it's the glaze that we're going to use because we checked the recipe. As I tip it back, oh look, there's a little bit of water in there. We want to make sure that we mix up this with a spatula so that it's nice and consistent. So we're going to stir it up, stir it up. We're going to get all the material off the bottom and we're going to stir it up. Little darling, stir it up. Uh, <clears throat> yes, so now that we've stirred it up, you can see it's nice and consistent. It's kind of the consistency of heavy cream. There's some bubbles on there that we're going to want to watch out for when we dip our piece into the bucket. So you dip it in, you hold it in there for a count of two or three. I'm stirring it around a little bit. And then I put it down to dry. You can use these tongs. I'm just not a big fan, but it does let you put the entire piece in and glaze the whole thing. What I'll do is just take the glaze, put it inside, kind of move it and slur, slur, you know, jiggle it around. And then I'll put it back in. Put another coating on the lip so they get a nice uniform consistency there and I'll put it down to dry. Now, here's something to watch. Notice where I grab this piece. I'm holding it right where there's clay and then I'm just lightly touching the glaze just a little bit to make sure it doesn't come off. Great, now I can dip in the other side, count of two or three, let it come out and presto. Oh. I think I missed the spot. I'm going to go in back in with a little piece of glaze and I'm just going to fill in the little holes and the gaps there. All right, now again, I'm going to touch the glaze to make sure it's not too wet so that I can pick it up. And then I'll hold it. I'll dip the whole thing in the bucket, count it two or three, and then notice I'm getting all the drips off of it. I'm using the sponge from out of the sink and I'm just cleaning the bottom off really quickly. Now, wherever your piece comes in contact with the kiln shelf, you want to wipe it off. Clean the glaze off of all areas that are going to touch anything else. We don't want glaze on the kiln shelves. We don't want glaze on other pieces that are belong to someone else. And, ah, touch up again. I'm just going to take a little dollop of glaze and fill in that little red area. And presto. The entire object is glazed and ready to go. But I'm going to double check everything just to make sure. 
So remember, wherever you wax, you need to do a little bit of wiping. So I'm wiping a little bit on the wax off, and then I realize I didn't glaze the interior foot. So take a little glaze, pour it in there, slosh it around, empty it out, and wherever I wa waxed, I'm going to wipe. All right, now comes cleanup. We're taking the spatula, our brushes, anything that we use to glaze, and we're cleaning it off in a preliminary glaze clean-off bucket. One final check, make sure when you use wax that you wipe. So wherever there was wax, I'm gonna wipe just a little bit more. Here's my perfectly clean bottoms. Make sure you check yourself before you wreck yourself. Anyone get that one? No? Okay. Well, here's the platter that I did, and if you look at the bottom, you can see that I wiped it down really well so that it doesn't stick to the kiln shelf. My feet are all done really nicely. So I'm gonna pick up my board, I'm gonna walk myself over to the glaze shelves, and I'm gonna put my stuff, take it off the board. It should be dry enough that the glaze doesn't come off in your hands, so make sure of that. And clean up and wipe down. Don't make someone else's life difficult. Clean up, it's a requirement. You gotta do it. And move things around. And here's the firing results of all that glaze work. We'll start off with the bowl. You can see the blue dots. They definitely aren't perfect, but I was experimenting a little bit. The bowl came out quite nicely. I like that line that happens where the glaze overlapped itself as I dipped it. Same thing happened with the plate. There's a line in the middle where the glaze is really white that the glaze overlapped itself. And then, let me check it out. This fits right on there. Nice! I can put some soup in there. Walk around with a plate of hors d'oeuvres. So the cup, you can see the red of the clay where I put wax resist on. You can also see the blue and the white that I put wax resist over that. And the foot, where the glaze is wider is where it's double dipped. So there are two glazes that you have you can use. There's a white glaze and a clear glaze. Put the clear over the white, you get a fuzzy kind of line like this. But if you take the white and you put it over the clear, you get a nice sharp line that looks like this. Those are the two examples. And remember, these examples are going to be in the studio for you to look at. You'll actually be able to see them in real time. Now I know, I know, there's a lot to take in from this video. But remember, you can always go back, you can look at it again, and here's the directions on how to do it. Uh, so you sponge off the work, you apply wax resist, when needed, you, uh, uh, you apply the glaze, you go, okay, now, this is just too fast. Okay, let's try this again. So glazing, we're going to make sure that we sponge off our work to get all the dust off of it. We're going to apply wax resist wherever it's needed, on the bottom or in our design. We're going to mix the glaze really well and get all the materials off the bottom of the bucket. We're going to apply the glaze. We're going to wipe off our bottoms really well. We're going to put our work on the shelves where glaze work goes, and we're going to clean off all the horizontal surfaces as well as the tools. And then you're done! You can go about now and have a rest of your day, or you can go in and get glazing. Your call.